Ow, at the moon. Yeah, I get to force myself to be in a good mood during weather videos. Isn't that very exciting? We have a full moon tonight. It's like a super pink moon or a rose moon or I don't know. You can call it whatever you want. Just be ready. The energy's probably going to be weird. As if you weren't used to weird energy already. We are in the Eris Alert Zone. That's right. Every time we get an Eris Earth conjunction, I guess it's solar, then, uh, we get the week before and the week after, I put everybody on super high alert because we usually get a big storm or two right around then. And right on cue, the Eris Alert, the Eris Conjunction is on the 13th, and we've got a storm that's going to be pretty nasty hitting the Midwest and the Northeast around the 13th or the 15th. So stay tuned because we're going to have a wild April in front of us. Like, look at this bad boy. Boom, boom. And, you know, I'm not making light of the problems that everyone is in lockdown or that, you know, having major weather problems are going to exacerbate other problems. But we got some pretty serious storms rolling in through. I know our atmospheric defense team is going to do their best to push them out to the ocean. But we may still have troubles and windy events. So I would be prepared for that as best you can, mentally, physically, and spiritually. How are you doing today? But as you can see, on the 12th, we get a pretty major storm, which has some heavy rain components for the southeast. That'll include Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and the Carolinas. And then you get your heavier wind component combined with some snow up in the northeast, including Canada. Canada. And one of these days, I'm going to learn how to pronounce Kanada correctly. The Comet Atlas is down to a 6.7 magnitude. It's only like a 2.2 away from being visible to the naked eye. But there's something strange going on with that. But we'll cover that in another video. But more interesting is the here and now. And we've got possibility for some, some severe weather for multiple states. We're talking Tennessee, Missouri, Kentucky, Kentucky. And then, you know, San Antonio, Indianapolis, Texas, Charlotte, Washington. This is over the next 24 hours, so be on your toes. Unless you've gained too much weight from all the quarantine snacks, then just stay on the base of your feet, I guess. Now, let's take a moment to say WTF together as we look at the projected precipitation over the next 48 hours. Because it seems to be acting a little bit of wild, a little bit of wacky, and a little bit of crazy. Notice how it takes a step backwards. Notice uh, things in Mother Nature are now starting to go retrograde as Venus moves into a shadow period, for it prepares to go retrograde. But that is not going to be till May. So, April's Eris month, and then May is going to be retrograde Venus month. And definitely expect weird, wild wackiness. We've got some heavy rain that's been moving through. California and the Northwest and things are getting wet in some places they're getting kind of snowy checking in on the West, best weather guy on the planet great weather guy as he tweets storms today's outlook with some critique the New York South Northeast corridor will feature storms but more of the heavy rain gusty wind type not too severe strong though question mark while southern flank of number two will turn severe into Pennsylvania and South New Jersey, etc. The first run is cited with the likely path of a few intense cells, West Virginia, and just regular Virginia. So yeah, you got like two chunks. Find to uppercut you in the nuts, proverbially. Why can't I talk anymore? James Wilson reminding us that Hurricane season is less than two months away. Tropical Cyclone Herald walloped Vanatu and is now moving to, toward East Fiji. Herald reached a rare Category 5 storm and now, now weakened some, which is good news, but a huge threat for Fiji to Tonga still. I guess today is Tuesday? I don't really know. Potential for severe thunderstorms Tuesday into Tuesday night across Ohio Valley and the Appalachians. And so 
yet we have the possibilities for some tornadoes. So I would stay on top of it because we're going to see some overall potential. Everybody loves potential. Possibly tornadoes, damaging winds, and a really, 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 really large hail is possible. We're talking two inches or more. Heavy rain across Southern California continued on Monday. More on the way for Tuesday and a lot of the rest of the week. So we're going to have some river flooding issues, some wind issues, tornado issues. It's going to be a severe weather month, buddies. Paris alert, buddy. 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 Right now we got 189 rivers flooding with the Edgar Casey shape still persistent and then quite a bit of flooding in the northeast which will just get floodier that's that's my call it's not often you can impress a woman with two inches but there you have it Catherine Provick whoa giant hail of two inches or more in diameter I guess it's because the diameter is not common for the Great Lakes for this time of the year. Make sure your vehicles are undercover tonight if you live in the black hatched areas. I used to have a hatchback. It was a CRX, Honda Mexican car. Yes, even Texas, we were in their areas there and their areas there. So yeah, heavy, angry ice falling out of the sky coming after your vehicles. James Wilson, hugging up the attention, the threat for flooding rain to soak Southern California. Also, snow levels will be low, with heavy wet snow for places like Big Bear Mountain. Watch for flash flooding and possible debris flows, especially in the burn scar areas. So yeah, dude, the next week, starting today, which is a Tuesday, I'm smart, through like the 15th, which is technically eight days, it's going to be pretty wild weather-wise. I think Nostradamus warned us ahead of time, which then I then warned you all ahead of time. So if everybody's ready, I guess this is when we find out if you're a Jim Can Tory or Jim Can't Tory. <laughs> That's the worst joke ever. All right, so we're looking at GFS 500 millibar geopolitical height. Damn! Cyclonic vorticity. And you can see it vorticizing, definitely. It's vorticizing down by California and by the northeast up into Canada. And then it's going to tickle the nose of Greenland. And if somehow I got my geography wrong, forgive me. I'm human. At least half of me is. Jim Cantori bringing the heavy science nerd crap. Northern Branch Troth is going to be finding its way between the blocked low east of Hudson Bay and the cutoff low of California. You got a low end to hold them. That was a bad joke, too. It will have to come through the subtropical ridge over the Mississippi Valley, and in doing so, be able to tap enough instability for a few rounds of severe weather. Man, I'm ready to tap some instability. And remember, with Jupiter and Saturn leading up to your grand conjunction December 21st, we're on the lookout for earthquakes volcanoes, general weird weather, and signs in the heavens all year. Scott Bachmeyer going, hey, look at the low and the high and the aerosols. Likely smoke? Mother Nature. And, you know, fill in your negative conspiracy crap if you want to. That's your thing, dude, if you like to go all negative all the time. Go for it. It is the Internet. Yeah, the Euro is suggesting pretty major storm on the 15th and since it falls within two days of the heiress conjunction I would kind of book it but you know it's 2020 anything can happen we yeah, have Monday night Tuesday morning Peoria Chicago Columbus you're getting a rain plus lightning would be my guess I don't like to judge people but a quiche is great but what type of inhuman monster makes beet bread if you ever had beets they're gross Man, I'm hoping the sun wakes up sometime soon from this deep solar minimum. A nice coronal mass ejection, especially after April 5th. That's what she said. But I'm not fully convinced that was a separate from the narrower CME, 
which I would associate with the filament eruption. Another problem event to me, some hesitant to say if, when, we may see effect at Earth. A little bit faster. But yeah, so the Eris alignment storm should be a bombogenesis big one. The Euro on day 9 has a drop from 1,003 millibars to 966, which is a 37 millibar drop in 24 hours. That's like a super double bombogenesis storm, man. So that could be pretty nasty, and that would bring some major winds. And this would be like a Category 2 hurricane over the land. So I would definitely keep your eyes out for possibly getting in your basement because this will be hitting basement areas. Then, cranky, tomorrow's SPC, which that was yesterday. So it's today's SPC outlook looks bright, but only because it's yellow letting you know. You got a slight chance for some really nasty weather. Yet remember, this is a general forecast product and we'll be chasing down individual cells of strong to severe capability and not a widespread blanket of activity. Town to town differences will be significant per isolated stronger course. Be sure and follow Cranky Weather Guy because he is awesome and he's one of the best around. And he's back on his Tweet Storm game. I'm going up to the spirit in the sky. When I die, I don't know when that is. But um, God is great and the sky is pretty dang cool too. Um, what was it talking about? The sun will come out tomorrow. This is today. It should come out in a couple hours. See, so yeah, that's a pretty large, slight, slight risk area. When we're talking about pretty big hail. And then a week from now, we should have our pretty big nasty storm that we get every six months like clockwork. So I hope you're prepped and ready. So simplify, pretty decent storm today and pretty stormy week and then a pretty big storm in a week. And then an April super pink moon, which means we will all be visited by lovely goddesses, well, werewolves, vampires, uh, CERN demons, and it'll be a battle, you know, it'll be a battle. So I would definitely like to say thank you to everybody in Asteroid Fight Club for being awesome and amazing. What a year 2020 has been so far. I just want you to know that I appreciate you, and I'll be here giving you guys the news, trying to bust out of this mini-funk that I've been in, because, man, 2020's been rough. But I'm not complaining, because nobody likes complaints. Yeah, it is definitely, we're in for a pretty nasty, look at that thing, dude, that thing is just impressive. That is our air storm, like clockwork, you can book it. And then it gets the follow-up storm after. So I'm, I'm sorry to report that the Midwest and the Northeast, including the Southeast, probably going to get pounded pretty hard, man. And you'll have some flooding issues and some major wind issues and some major hail issues. But we'll get through it. It's because it's what we do. And then hopefully in the ninth month, things will start to improve. So we've only got like five more months to go of where it seems like we're trapped in the bad place. So try and make the best of it. And please, anytime you're happier over anything, enjoy that to the max. All right. God bless everyone. Stay cool. And I'll be talking to you all into the near future. Peace out.